Hi there, I'm going to go through some common types of urinary incontinence. The five types are stress incontinence, urge incontinence, or overactive bladder is another word for it, overflow incontinence, mixed, and functional incontinence. So let's talk about stress incontinence first. This is when uh, happens mostly in women, when you cough, sneeze, or laugh, or a type of exercise, think jumping on a trampoline, doing um, squats, doing jumping jacks, you leak urine. It's actually caused by a functional issue, a weakened um, bladder and urethra, urethra. And it's usually caused from childbirth uh, because think about the weight that it's putting on the pelvic floor. The really the uh, uterus and the bladder are all attached by ligaments. They are attached to bone, but it is really attached by one large ligament. And so if you have that, uh, multiple childbirths, especially that can just put added pressure. Things start um, uh, wearing down and basically sagging. And if you've heard of um, elderly women where you can have a prolapse, that ends up what's happening. Sometimes it can be just a mild um, incontinence, and sometimes it's really bad where these women are just leaking urine all the time. Um, sometimes men can have it with uh, BPH, with a prostatic hyper, pros, prostate hypertrophy or prostate cancer. So what is the treatment for that? So if you have mild stress incontinence, you can do some Kegel exercises. Sometimes obesity can cause it, so weight loss will help. Uh, smoking also can do that, or uh, smoking is not treatment, smoking is a cause. So quit smoking. Smoking's not good for anything. Also, topical estrogen products. So if you're postmenopausal, you have weakening, you can get atrophy of that vaginal area. So things can drop and you can have issues that way. Uh, another thing. So there are pessary, it's called a pessary, and that is just a contraption that you basically put up in the uh, vagina and it holds the bladder up. A lot of elderly women try that. It's not the most comfortable thing. If things are very uncomfortable, they can have a bladder, uh, vaginal, transvaginal taping it's called. They actually don't lift the bladder up. They actually put a sling uh, that's right underneath the urethra. So if you cough, the urethra kind of bounces off this tape so it's not you're not going to leak urine in that way all right so think about that as a mechanical issue urge incontinence so that's overactive bladder if you've heard the commercial for nablex gotta go gotta go gotta go right now so that is a problem between your brain talking to your bladder sometimes it could be psychological sometimes it's not but there's an issue with the um, overactive detrusor muscle. When you think of your bladder, it's a muscle. So this is a muscle issue. And what happens is um, you can have like a nervous system disorder, sometimes stroke, Alzheimer's, a brain tumor, Parkinson's disease. That can all cause issues with having overactive bladder, feeling like you have to go. Cancer can cause it. Or if you've had radiation to that area, um, any uh, spinal cord injury, uh, can cause that too because think about the pathway from the brain to the bladder. It goes through the spinal cord and that um, then could um, mess up the message system. So how do we treat this one? Well, we try to treat the underlying cause, uh, which sometimes is not always that easy, uh, especially if you have Parkinson's or cancer. Uh, things like that. But if you have, let's say, a bladder infection that's causing you to rush to the bathroom all the time, that's easily treatable. I don't know if you've ever heard, but it can have a psychological component where you come home every day and the first thing you do is have to run to the bathroom no matter what, even if you've just been to the bathroom. So sometimes they do uh, bladder retraining uh, there's dietary irritants like acidic things that they tell you to stay away from. And also another good exercise is to tell people if you wake up in the middle of the night, because these people frequently wake up, you try to wait 15 minutes and many times that bladder spasm will calm down and then that feeling will go away. 
There's also medication. So there's Vesicare, Enablex, Merbetric. You don't have to know. I'll know those. But just know, remember from pharmacology, go back to the anti-muscarinic medications. Sometimes we use estrogen creams to help. And we tell people to put the estrogen cream right around the urethral area. It helps estrogenize the area and increases, um, or, um, increases moisture to the area which then um, can decrease the risk for having vaginal atrophy and infections, which can contribute to urge incontinence. Overflow incontinence. So what is that? That occurs, that's when the pressure of the urine in the bladder is overflowing. And so that sphincter gives out basically and you start leaking urine. Uh, you can leak small amounts of urine through the day. Sometimes uh, it's... Uh, you start leaking a little bit and then you just let it all out because that sphincter just lets go and you're unable to hold it in anymore. When you feel the bladder, it's usually distended. What, one main reason why you see this is uh, post-op. So if someone has their prostate resected or women have uh, a vaginal hysterectomy or even have... Um, <clears throat> any type of anesthesia, if they had a hemorrhoidectomy, you can have uh, a lack of feeling to the bladder. And so it's really important to watch the output. They may have a Foley catheter, uh, they may not. So if they don't, you have to make sure you're checking that bladder. So what's the first thing you're going to do? Well, you're gonna watch obviously their vital signs. Blood pressure starts going up, heart rate starts going up, what's going on. Or the patient may say, you know what, I feel like I have to go to the bathroom and I can't you bladder scan them because then you can see actually how much urine is in the bladder. Other reasons for overflow incontinence is they can have a herniated disc, diabetic neuropathy, uh, so think about things like that, or functional things such as bladder neck obstruction, urethral stricture, so before surgery also. Uh, there's medications for it also, but just think about treatment is usually urinary catheterization so you want to put a foley in you do the bladder scan first put the foley in to decompress the bladder and get that urine out uh, if you're trying to get them to urinate you can always try the old-fashioned way of turning on warm water to see if that will help sometimes you just cat them once and then that urethra will start relaxing a little bit so they can urinate on their own you can give um, alpha adrenergic blockers also Okay, and then we go to mixed incontinence. Now that's just a mixture of both. So many women have stress and urge incontinence. It's more common in women than it is in men. Although women, men can have it, again, like we talked about before with the BPH. But stress and urge incontinence a lot of times go together. So if someone comes in to the urologist and say, I leak when I urinate, uh, we usually, I used to work in urology as an NP, so we will do um, um, hemodynamics of the bladder. And so we want to, basically it's a test to see if they have just stress incontinence or if they have some urgent incontinence in addition to that. Many times we'll have them try a medication such as Vesicare uh, to go home on and see if that helps their incontinence issue. If it doesn't, then we think about doing surgery, but we just know that they have a component of that too. Um, just to go back to, you don't have to know this, but just a little tidbit. People with overactive bladder, remember it's a, a message disruption from the brain to the bladder. Um, we can put a, a stimulator in to that nerve in the spine. And how we do that is a trial first. So we have a catheter that's leading to the sacral nerve that talks to the bladder and, and the wire comes out of that area. We tape it all up and you can uh, it's like a little box, it's wireless, and then you just set the settings and it stimulates that nerve and helps the um, overactive bladder and it decreases it. And so if it works, then they implant it in the butt, in the butt cheek. So many women um, have had that, many men have had that. Okay, and the last thing is functional incontinence. Functional incontinence, think of something that has to do with more of a functional issue. So whether it's environmental, cognitive, functional, you can't get to the bathroom quick enough, 
um, or you know they have balance issues, severe arthritis. What if a patient has dementia? So you can have functional incontinence. Sometimes it can be due to a fistula. It's rare, but it can happen, which is that abnormal connection between the vagina and urinary tract. Um, and that can happen, then it just starts dribbling out. It will depend, a treatment depends on what's going on. So you try to do some modifications to have the toilet right next to the patient, uh, lighting, uh, removal of rugs, and um, you know, helping them with you know, some assistive devices such as walkers and things like that, timed voiding, um, uh, et cetera. All right, so look at your textbook because your textbook is a really good supplement and really digging deeper into these types of issues. That's it.